welcome to this week's preview show coming from Vitality Stadium. BBC Radio Solent's Chris Temple joins me as we look ahead to another big weekend in the Premier League. Here's what's coming up today. We'll be looking back at that fantastic win at Stamford Bridge last weekend. We'll also be joined by first team goalkeeper Aaron Ramsdale. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to tomorrow's game against Burnley here at Vitality Stadium. Well, first, let's start back at last weekend and that brilliant win at Stamford Bridge. Chris, there's just one place to start and that's with that Dan Gosling goal. Well, what a moment. I mean, uh, the theatre of the whole VAR sort of moment as well, I guess, just added to it all, really, and I guess made it stick in everybody's mind. But, I mean, you know, we talked about last week. I mean, I predicted a 1-1, which I was not far away with. But, you know, we talked about the fact that, you know, sometimes the siege mentality and when the chips are down and you've literally got everyone who's fit on the pitch, sometimes that can muster the sort of spirit that you need. And, you know, let's face it, Chelsea weren't at the, absolutely at their best, but what a performance defensively um, from a, a relatively inexperienced back four. Um, you know, some of the guys in there have hardly played a game this season um, but yeah the Gosling goal just to, to answer your question properly um, you know it, you did a great social media video this week of him celebrating three times uh, running off in different directions the second one particularly when he ran off on his own having misread the scoreboard was probably my favorite uh, when he thought he saw the word goal but actually it said checking goal um, but yeah just the, the drama of it all and you know the fact that as soon as we saw it you know on our monitors in the stadium we thought hang on a second this is going to be all right. And the fans in the ground probably didn't have that much idea because it all happened very fast. And then just the, the euphoria of everybody piling on, uh, Aaron Ramsdale's cheeky celebrations towards the, the Chelsea fans as well. Um, just so many things that when you look back at it, it makes you smile. And I think people will have been sort of s sucking up the uh, the social media reaction and the video highlights and everything for days. I know people go, oh, it's only one result, don't get carried away. But in the context of the run Bournemouth were on and the magnitude of the victory and the manner of the victory, everything about it was huge. And, you know, VAR, it's had a lot of criticism, but in that moment, it almost added to it, didn't it? Yeah, and we've spoken before about there hasn't been that much VAR drama in Bournemouth games. Of course, we had the Joshua King goal here against West Ham and one or two other sort of minor moments, but nothing as big as that. And imagine if VAR wasn't involved uh, and that had got chalked off. And, you know, Bournemouth quite conceivably could have gone on to lose the game and everybody would have gone... You know, just when you needed a bit of luck. So I think I said in commentary, you know, just when you need VAR most, absolutely it was there because it was a, a poor decision from the assistant referee in the first place. Albeit you can see why the decision was made because those are the hard ones the, where there's lots of moving parts, people running in different directions. People that were offside. But yeah, and that's, that's why it's very difficult for the assistants. It's not a job I would want to do. I think I'd want to be an assistant less than I want to be a ref. Particularly these days where basically if you get it wrong, you get shown up on TV as, you know, um, as making a mistake. So I feel a bit sorry for the assistant, but the main thing was that VAR, came in to, uh, yeah, the knight in shining armour was VAR. And we're going to talk to Aaron Ramsdale a little bit later on, but him, the whole back four, they were superb, weren't they? Yeah, I mean, Ramsdale, first of all, made two or three very good saves. The one early on from, from Mason Mount, his good friend, um, you know, it was really important to keep the score at nil-nil. That's in the first 10 minutes, I think. Um, the, the one later on from uh, the, the low shot that he saved, the point blank header from Emerson, you know, absolutely fantastic saves. Uh, just commanding, you know, commanding the back four, ordering them around. Uh, I thought Chris Meppen was outstanding. Um, again, we spoke last week about shuffling the back four around and that would enable Chris Meppen to play on the left of the centre halves. I think that benefited him. Uh, Jack Stacey obviously having the experience for Simon Francis alongside. Um, I thought you know he did really well to shut down Pulisic, a 50, 50 million pound player who barely had a kick in the game. Um, so yeah, as a, as a defensive unit, and let's not forget Diego Rico, who you know we forget is is inexperienced at Premier League level as well. So yeah, what a, what an effort from them. The, the back four, pretty much the only five who are available. Um, you know, with the greatest respect to Jack Simpson, who hasn't really been in the in the picture. Um, yeah, they need they're going to have a very different test this weekend, that's for sure. And match of the day highlighted Jefferson Lerma as well. And you know, we could stand here all day and pick out individual players. But again, he didn't put a foot wrong, did he? No, it was absolutely everywhere. He really was up and down. And again, those games where, you know, the, the game gets a bit stretched and he's suddenly back putting a, a tackle in his own box. And the next thing you know, he's at the other end trying to put a ball into the Chelsea box. So, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the sort of game where he is, just shows his value is just absolutely bottomless tank of energy and fitness and everything else. Um, athleticism. Um, and it was good that, you know, match of the day highlighted him. I think it's, you know, it's probably been overdue, to be honest, how vital he is to Bournemouth. And with all the injuries, all the problems, you know, you spoke about it a minute ago. It, you know, we do we do enjoy going to Chelsea, but that was the the biggest win of them all, probably, wasn't it? Some people have suggested that's the biggest Premier League win um, in Bournemouth's history, which, of course, every time a big one comes along, it's sort of, you know, the, the previous ones sort of mould back into the history a little bit. Possibly with the resources available, you might say, you know, that possibly was. Um, I think, you know, obviously Chelsea 
Bournemouth do seem to catch Chelsea at times when they're not quite firing on all cylinders, but it's a great, great record to have won there three times in five seasons. Um, it's a brilliant, you know, what, what, a, what a place to be able to regularly win. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a team that Bournemouth will be happy to face uh, regularly, I would imagine. Absolutely. Well, someone who was outstanding last weekend was, of course, Aaron Ramsdale. Let's remind ourselves of one of those big saves. Abraham tried to improvise. Away by Francis, not too far. And Emerson, point-blank save from Ramsdale. Best chance Chelsea have had in the entire game. Well, a superb save there. Now, as you can see, we have been joined by the man himself. Rambo, thank you for joining us. Just talk us through that win last week at Chelsea. You more than played your part. Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a fantastic win for for us as players, uh, but especially the fans. Um, it seems like they like going to Chelsea and we've had some good results there. And um, They sang the hearts out all game and for us to end up getting a 1-0 win away from home, no matter who it's against, uh, a clean sheet away from home and three points is excellent. And for it to be Chelsea, who's pushing for top four, top six, then yeah, it was um, it was a perfect weekend, really. And after the game, you and the rest of the team, you came over to the fans. You know, you're clapping them. Eddie Howe came up to you. What did he say to you then after after such a good performance? Um, we just spoke because the the, the few performances performances before, um, I was probably critical of myself and. Didn't think I was helping the team and uh, the gaffer probably reiterated that and said we, we need you this weekend probably more than ever and um, just after the game he said I, I, I asked questions about you and, and you, you stood up like a man and that's what we need every week and um, I know that's what we need every week for myself and um, the performances before uh, weren't good enough and um, so that's how we need to, to continue going. And from your point of view, you've played half a season of Premier League football now. How have you found it and, and how has it gone from your perspective? Like I said, I think, I think I've done OK. I think um, over the run we had, there were certain games where I could have done better and um, sort of my strengths weren't my strengths anymore. So my kicking and my shot save, saving were probably the ones which looked a bit weak um, throughout my game. But... Um, I think overall it's been positive for me and like I say, first half a season in the Premier League, I don't think I personally could have asked for much better. Um, there's been ups and downs already, um, but a few more points on the table would have been would have been nicer. But if we can get um, a good result tomorrow and build some momentum, then we can start locking up rather than down. And obviously you've been out on loan at Chesterfield at Wimbledon. How much of those experiences taught you and, and prepared you, you know, for the, the start of the season you've had? Yeah, most definitely. Um, in more ways than one, really, because they've, we've been in dogfights both times when I've gone alone in January, and um, we're sort of preparing ourselves as if we're in a dogfight right now, because that's the mentality we need to have until we are actually safe in the Premier League. So um, I can call on my experiences of last year and um, remembering what I was doing and how I can help the team and encouragement I can give. Um, so. Then with that, on that side of the experience, it's it's brilliant for me because I've been there and done it, and um, it's very different playing style because they can have one shot and they can score, and you could you could end up losing the game one nil. But um, the likes of the your game management at the end of the game, if you if you're winning like at Chelsea, then you know when to put the ball into the corner and just boot it up the pitch, and um, that was massive at Wimbledon and cross taking and things like that but it's a little bit different because you don't have lads who are six foot five six foot six steaming in at you who have done it all their life in that league so um now it's just about adapting to the style of play and um learning the, the game in the premier league and for you here we've got you know neil moss goalkeeper coach we had him on the preview show at the start of the season and then you've got the likes of mark travers another brilliant young talent Arthur Boric how close is your goalkeeper unit and you know what's it like to be training out there with them um it's pretty weird how close we actually are to be honest um the only way I see it is because me and Mark are so close in age and when I first came it was like our little group of me Mark Jordan Holmes Callum Stanton Pat O'Flaherty like going back a few years um we used to do everything off the pitch together and that's just stuck and that's brought our mine and Mark's friendship closer and gradually as them 
them lads left the club, it was like me and Mark just sort of looked at each other and was like, we're in it together. And seeing him play last year, I came back and it was like a real good bond. And on the other end, you've got Mossy and Ant, Gaz and Joe as a staff and Art is closer to them than he is to us. So um, it's almost like we've got a fourth coach on the pitch with Arta and um, we got Will Dennis joining us for training. So there's three real young lads and then, as as I say, the older lads and the coaches. But yeah, it's if you came out to watch one of our sessions, it would just look like we're messing about and, and just having fun. But at the end of the day, we're having fun, but we're getting all our work done. And um, we're every tiny little detail, Mossy and Matt Parker, they all go through and it's, it's an incredible amount of detail. I get iPads before the game and 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 see penalties and we do everything this week around Burnley. Um, I don't think I've ever done as much crossing in my life, but um, I could say it's it's a great bond on the pitch and especially off the pitch. You can it's a cliche. You can pick the phone up and call anyone, but especially big man. Um, we most of the time on away trips, we our rooms will be next to each other. Just incidentally and. He'll be just texting me through the wall and just seeing how I am. So it's um, it's a great bond to have, and um, there's no animosity. If if when Trav plays or I play or Arta plays, and everyone gets behind each other, and um, I think that's because we're so young that we see it in that way, and we we don't get annoyed or uptight about anything. And just finally, you spoke of the fantastic setup here. We've seen you playing regularly for England under 21s. Just describe those experiences for you, and you know how much you've learnt from them. Yeah, of, of course. I've tried to. So last year, I was sort of knocking on the door, and they had three great goalkeepers: and Angus Gunn, Freddie Woodman, and Dean Anderson, who's now playing in the Premier League. And I couldn't quite manage to get into that squad last year. Um, and now this time, it's almost it's almost my year. And I can't get complacent because there's keepers who can easily take my place. But if I carry on playing in the Premier League and performing, then um, I sort of have my spot ready in the 21s. And that's been great because we've gone away to, to Turkey and played in in front of 12, 14,000 people, which every time we got the ball, we're just screaming. Um, made it real hostile. It was like a proper away day. Um, and that was our first ever game together as a squad. And that was testing. Um, we got through that. We've won every game of the group, been to Albania, stayed there in basically a hostel, no Wi-Fi, no nothing. And these things you take for granted. And, and we went there and we still did a job and we won. And um, So 21's football has probably brought more of an eye opener because of how much you, you have to sacrifice and you just realise the necessities aren't the necess necessities anymore. And, you just get on with it and play football and um, like I say it's a, it's similar to the Premier League um, but probably a little bit slower so when I can go there and I've played four games in the Premier League the month before you're almost up to you're, you're too up to speed for it so it probably makes it a little bit easier for you um, but the challenge is then not to to drop your standards for the first game back after internationals and you get caught out by a ball or a pass and, uh, and you, you cost your team so there's lots of challenges there and um, I'm enjoying it and hopefully in March we can, can round off a good qualifying campaign for the year and, and put us in a good uh, good place to, to get qualified next year. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for joining us. I'm sure I join all the fans in wishing you the best of luck for the weekend. Thank you. Now then, the weekend is where we are turning our attention to next and let's have a look at what Eddie Howard had to say in his pre-match press conference. Um, we've got a... a Concerns on a few players. We'll make very relate calls on them. Have we got anyone returning from, from injury from the previous weeks? No, I don't think so. Um, we're pretty much as we were. We needed a lift. It came from the players giving absolutely everything to the last match. That game against Chelsea, they, they committed to, to everything. Um, and we're very keen now to try and back that result up with another one against Burnley. We know how difficult this game's going to be, but it's absolutely key. We don't waste that win and we try and build on it. They're very hard to play against and they never give anybody an easy game. They're very well organised. Sean's done a great job there. And in the Premier League, you know, with the quality of teams you're playing, you go through good spells of form, bad spells of form. That's natural, I think. I think every team does the same. Um, but I think from their perspective, they'll be, they'll be pleased with where they are. We probably, last season, we didn't do well enough at, at dealing with their strengths in the two games we had against them. We were disappointed with how we performed. So, um, 
hopefully this season we can we can show our strengths more. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking this morning. Chris, after that fantastic win last weekend, there's no doubt that confidence will be high back at home in front of the home fans. Yeah, and probably need it against a Burnley team who Bournemouth have never, haven't really got to grips with their physical threat in the Premier League. Um, Burnley have won four out of six, um, but did the double last season, a 7-1 aggregate, although the 4-0 away from home was, um, you know, was a bit of a full scoreline in the end, but didn't play very well here last season. Burnley have won on their last two visits here. Um, Wood and Barnes are a, a pain, absolute pain. There's talk that Chris Wood might not be fit, which, uh, you know, they've got 13 goals between them, which is a great return for two guys that you, you know, you think of big physical strikers as often not being able to produce the goal returns. Um, but they, you know, a, that's a great, a great return. And again, often you think of two big physical strikers not actually being able to play together. So Wood and Barnes have really, have really formed a great partnership. They get some good service from the wing. Um, but yeah, cup, it's not been a team that Bournemouth have enjoyed playing against. Um, Bournemouth aren't the biggest. That is one of the issues. Um, you know, Steve Cook and Nathan Ake aren't the biggest, but they've got great springs. It's going to be a big test of, of Chris Meppham in a different way this weekend uh, in terms of dealing with that because, you know, it's not just about who can jump the highest. There's a lot of other nuances that go on to being a centre-half playing against those centre-forwards who do a lot of the ugly stuff pretty well. But that can be disrespectful because they're good footballers. Chris Wood's an international, good footballer. Um, so, you know, they're, they're the, the, I guess, the, the, the spear point of the... Um, of the Burnley attack, um, you know, they, they do they do what they do well, which is, a, I feel like I'm going back to the Sean O'Driscoll stage days when he used to go, they do what they do, um, they do what they do pretty well, um, and they've, you know, had an up and down season, lost last three, but then won a pretty scrappy game against Newcastle last week. And as you say, you know, the record against Burnley, they often, you know, they do pull out results. They've won four of our six Premier League games. They've got threats all over the pitch. And someone who, who has stood out this season has been Dwight McNeil. I think he's put the fifth highest number of crosses into the box. And it, it goes to show, you know, what, what threats they do have. Yeah, he's only 20. I think he's someone said he's played the last 30 odd Premier League games. I think I was reading that on your website actually 36, yesterday. 36, I did 36, believe. there you go. Did you type that article I yourself? I did write that. Uh, <laughs> talking to the local Burnley media, excuse me. Um, but yeah, Dwight McNeil, great to see a, a you know, young talent given an opportunity as well um, you know Burnley haven't always produced you know a lot of their own players not in recent seasons in the Premier League anyway and for them a bit like Bournemouth really there's not a bottomless pit of money so you do have to sometimes elevate your own players and it's good to see Dwight McNeil getting that chance um, obviously Nick Pope back between the sticks international goalkeeper as well Tarkovsky uh, briefly in England international Ben Mee at centre half who Eddie Howe knows well um, actually took him to Burnley uh, from, from his early Man City days someone like Jack Cork in midfield who's been I think he's on the, the verge of 250 games <coughs> Excuse me, the former Southampton man, and obviously, um, you know, knows the South Coast uh, very well from uh, from his time here as well. So, yeah, um, all over the pitch, a, a functional team. Sean Dyche is, you know, took over when Eddie left, and is still there now. The two longest-serving managers in the Premier League. And in terms of our team news, I mean, last weekend we saw Junior Stanislas back on the bench. That probably went a bit unnoticed in the grand scheme of things, but we did see Joshua King hobble off with an injury as well. Yeah, he hobble off. He roll, rolled, <laughs> rolled off, off, didn't Sorry, he? Yeah, literally. <laughs> it was the first time I've seen anyone roll off the field, I think. Um, yeah, uh, Joshua King, I think, is a 50-50 is a, is a wait and see. Um, he hasn't been training by all accounts this week, so obviously he just come back from a problem, so you hope he hasn't picked up a, another one. Um, I think I'm right in saying f four of Bournemouth's five wins this season have been with Joshua King in the team, and without him, they've only won one of five. So, um, yeah, he's, he's pretty important, I think, from that stat. Callum Wilson, of course, the, the equal importance is that Callum Wilson isn't fit. Um, Dom Solanke, there was talk last week he had a bit of a knock, we're not sure about that one. Harry Wilson won't be involved, he's away with Liverpool, has been getting checked at Liverpool with his sort of mystery problem. No Dan Juma. Um, Stanislas has had a very difficult week, you know, in personal, his personal situation, um, which fans will know about. So uh, I think, he, I think he, he's back with a group and probably will be uh, sort of in, in the right frame of mind to be involved. So you can't really see that many changes, to be honest with you. Um, if everybody who was played last week is fit, I can see, you know, a similar sort of lineup taking the field this time. Maybe Solanke might be back in to just offer a bit more um, attacking threat at home, have a second striker. And just finally, what's that score prediction this week? You were close I'm, last week. Yeah, I'm feeling I, just because Burnley have been a bit hit and miss um, away from home. They've had a couple of good wins though. They've you know they've won at Watford. They've um, had a, a good win over West Ham as well. Um, two 0 Bournemouth. Go for a clean sheet. Two yeah. nil Bournemouth. There we go. Well, if you want to have a go at predicting the score this weekend, head over to Mansion Bet's website and take part in their Predict Six game. If you are coming here tomorrow, then we look forward to seeing you. But if not, make sure you listen to Chris on BBC Radio Solent for the latest updates. Bye for now.